Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and just a quick little sound check if everyone could just give me some feedback on whether um, I sound okay. Uh, I'm using a different lapel mic. Uh, shout out to Nick, Apple's Anonymous, uh, for sending that to me. Uh, he said he was going to send me a microphone and, he, microphone and he came good on his promise and sent me a microphone. So just checking to see how this goes. Um, as I, in my last live stream, I mentioned I've got a, a different rig here for running my sound now. I've got all sorts of uh, mega fanciness going on down here in the form of a little uh, mixing desk for fancy, uh, fancy YouTubers. Um, so yeah, uh, please let me know how the sound is, whether it's good, bad, otherwise, and all that sort of stuff. So the biggest, the main issue was that when I changed across to this M1 Mac, all of a sudden my audio just went, just got really, really quiet. And uh, I was uh, getting a few mentions from people saying, hey, your audio is really quiet. And then I was like, holy crap, it is too. Um, and I just could not get it any louder with the setup I had. So I bought some extra equipment, which allows me to give some more gain to the microphone and it seems to be doing it without any issues. So uh, I'm just gonna do my normal thing. I'm gonna say hello to everyone. Sorry, I'm starting a little bit late today, but I went out and had a bender last night. Caught up with some old school friends and got very, very drunk. Uh, hello to Enzo Fitzhume. Hello to Jeremy's Vintage Hillbilly Shack. Luke F is here. Steve McAddy for hello, Bill. Um, and who else have we got? I think I've got a gut bomb here and things. 9 p.m. here, by the way. Yes, well, that's not too bad, is it? I mean, you know, 9 p.m., good time to sit down and start watching a live stream, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say? Um, sorry, I've got some noisy chickens going on out there. Uh, so, um, don't you love this? It's a little puck made out of resin. I've been playing, playing with resin. Um, okay, so, uh, I've got a Macintosh Classic here, and I just, I've just glanced at it, and I'm already freaked out. Um, so this was sent to me as a complete unit with the owner saying, can you please recap the logic board and analog board? I was like, yep, no worries. I did the logic board straight away, tucked it away and didn't do the analog board. And then he contacted me the other day and saying, hey, how's everything going? And I'm like, um, um, so anyhow, this is me now uh, trying to get this one sorted out and get it back to him as quick as possible. Uh, now, why did I just say I've looked at this and I'm freaked out? Uh, is because I've just noticed that there are two capacitors where I'd normally expect to see only one. I'd, I'd expect to see capa two capacitors there if this was the 120 volt version, but not the 240 volt version. So we're going to open it up and have a little look-see and it was probably okay, so... Um, Carlo Ricchetti, Ricchetti, Ricchetti or Ricchetti, hello there, welcome to the live stream. Um, I'm not a big fan of doing analog boards, never have been, I don't particularly like doing through hole stuff, I like doing surface mount soldering, that's just me, that's, that's what I like. And, um, you know, um, don't, you know, sort of don't, uh, uh don't judge me, um, uh, in my last live stream, I had some very interesting things going on with my audio. I was using a different microphone, and just before I started doing the live stream, the little clip that puts it on, onto my shirt broke. And so I was sort of had it attached with wrapped up wire and stuff like that. I have since 3D printed a new clip, um, but uh, if this mic works well, I'll keep using this mic. The big problem I've been having with microphones is um, that uh, the cables wear out. So I don't want to buy really expensive ones because the, they, they just don't last very long. So I'm basically just going to be looking for budget microphones. The audio is good enough for a live stream, let's face it, at the end of the day. As long as you guys can hear me, that's the important thing. And there's no snaps and crackles and pops and stuff. Max is here. Hello there, Max. Uh, currently got three faulty classic analog boards sitting here. Are you going to recap me yourself, Max? <laughs> um, had quite a good haul on Friday. Um, I jumped onto Facebook and I saw this guy who had two of the, what are they, 15 inch, I think, something like that, um, LCD screens, the ones with the ADC connector. So for those who aren't familiar, during the G4, I think, era, I think it, don't think it was G3, but during the G4 era, Apple started releasing display cards with, they typically would have a, uh, a VGA or a DVI connector, but they would also have an ADC connector. And that was Apple's proprietary stuff. It was a Apple uh, display connector. And what was interesting about the ADC connector is it actually powered the device as well. And it also connected up things like USB. So you could have a monitor plugged in with one single plug, 
and have no power cable for the monitor and you could have USB ports on the monitor and everything like that. So this person had two of these, both working, bit, bit grubby, but both working. And, um, and he had two of them and he just said, um, can't be bothered selling these. I'm in Penrith. Uh, if you can come and collect them, they're yours. And so I was like, okay, well, I've never, I've never had one of these little LCD screens before. I've never had one before. I've never owned one that, that were prohibitively expensive back in the day. Um, you know, for me anyway. Uh, and so um, I thought, oh, I'm going to jump on that. I'm in, I'm in um, sort of Blacktown area in Sydney. He's in Penrith. So it's a good 30 minutes west of me. Um, uh, but it's a nice, easy drive. So I just contacted him and I said, um, you know, when, 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 when will you be there? And, um, uh, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm here now, head over if you want. So I just jumped in the car, head over and grabbed them. While I was there, <laughs> this is the thing you always, when you've got people that have got stuff like that, while I was there, he said, would you be interested in one of those sort of blue Macs? And I said, you mean like a, a one of the towers, the tower computer? He said, no, no, the all in one ones. I said, like an iMac? And he said, uh, I said, yeah, I said, does, does it work? He said, oh yeah, it works. I said, well, oh, look, I'm not particularly interested in it, but I'm sure I'll be able to find someone who is. So if you're, if you're happy to part with it, I'll take it off your hands and then, you know, I'll see if we can find a new home for it. So yeah, no worries. Great that no keyboard and mouse, unfortunately, it's just the, the thing, but it works. Hard drive works, screen works, it fires up. The speakers are a bit crackly, which is very common for those because the, um, the webbing on the speaker starts to deteriorate. And there are actually ways of repairing that, which I may end up doing. And so I came away with two 15-inch uh, ADC LCD displays and a an Indigo G3 iMac, uh, 450 megahertz, I think. It's one that's got the little uh, VGA connector at the back. I walked away with all of that for nothing. So I was feeling extremely pleased with that. Um, so, okay, so I saw that one yesterday. Yes, it, yeah, um, I haven't actually gone back to see if anyone else has commented on it, but uh, uh, because since I started watching your videos, our house smells like burning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, oh, well, she'll get used to it. I'm sure she'll get used to it. Yeah. Uh, if you play with resin enough, you might put it all over coloring pencils lengthwise, then chuck it in a lathe. That's all that seems to come up in my Facebook feed these days. Um, people, um, making things out of resin and stuff. So whatever it is, a bit pine cones, pencils, crayons, you know, and they pour resin and then they put it on a lathe and turn it into a lamp or something like that. I, they are constantly coming up in my feed and I don't want to see them. But anyway, um, they need more than a recap. Unfortunately, they're all completely dead. What are, what, what? Oh, those, oh, okay, I see. No worries, that's the classics we're talking about. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, inner, inner, hello to Ruggers Customs. Welcome to the live stream. What color, yeah, Indigo. It is Indigo. That other Indigo you gave me actually has a 700 megahertz board in it. So that will be good to upgrade another one. Oh, that's, that's excellent. I didn't know that. I had no idea. Um, or maybe I should have kept it. Uh, isn't it, isn't, it? It's funny. It's like it's the way the world goes around. So I got hold of this not working Indigo iMac. Again, I got it for nothing. So someone just gave it to me. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll have a crack at fixing it. And I had a bit of a play, started testing a lot of the caps and stuff like that. And then I just lost interest in it. And the main reason I lost interest is I got another iMac that worked. And so I'm just like, I can't be bothered going and fixing one now because this one works. Uh, it was a snow, uh, a G3 snow iMac that, you know, works beautifully. Um, and uh, and then so I actually gave that Indigo one away. I gave it to, to Max. I said, look, you know, all the parts are here. You have a crack at fixing it or indeed in this instance, um, repurposing some parts for another one. And, um, and then just by pure coincidence, I then get hold of a working one and it's the same color. Um, fastest iMac I have is 600 megahertz. Of course, not including the G5 iMac. We're talking G3s, I assume. Uh, great video of Steve's, if you will. Uh, there was a video that came out by, who was it? It was one of the Linus Tech Tip guys, I think, or something, where they were basically throwing all this hate at the G3 iMac, and it was filled with inaccuracies. I mean, it was just, they were just saying all this stuff, you know, and they were being high, highly critical of the G3 iMac. And, and Steve got so riled up about it, he basically stayed up all night 
and recorded a response video where he uh, talked about all of the inaccuracies that they made, you know, all the things that they said wrong about the G3 iMac, you know. Uh, there, I mean, some of the stuff they were saying is like, this was the last Mac to utilize the PowerPC processor, which is just, I mean, there's a G3. I mean, after G3s came G4s, after G4s came G5s. And, uh, and then uh, they moved across to Intel. And it's just like, you know, it, just do your research if you're going to say stuff like that. So... Steve, feel free to check a link into that video because I still love that one. I've watched that more than once. I really enjoy that video. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's get into it, shall we? Um, as I say, I've got my uh, Macintosh Classic here. It has the original hard drive in it. Uh, it's a Quantum. I don't know if it still works, but I guess we'll probably find out. And the other thing I need to find out is um, this has got the original floppy drive in it and it's probably got some corrosion. And we just have to uh, see if... Uh, if he wants that cleaned and serviced, but I'll ask him once I get everything else working. So, um, uh, you back to recapping? I have a Color Classic Two that I'm too scared to tackle. Uh, look, at the moment I'm not okay, and I'll tell you why. Um, I have uh, so many commitments now, so many time commitments that are just getting. I'm, I'm getting, I'm lucky if I'm getting one job done a week and it's just not fair on people to be doing that, to be, you know, to, so I am going to, once I get clear this backlog, um, I am going to then start taking occasion, uh, job, jobs very selectively and they are going to be ones that I probably then end up live streaming. So uh, I'm not saying never, I probably will, you know, get back to doing some recapping, but I'll be taking them on very, very slowly because um, I have a full-time job uh, and that is really busy now. Uh, it's, it didn't used to be, um, you know, during COVID things just quieted right down and I just had, you know, lots and lots of days where I could just do recapping. But now my full-time job is like really, really busy. And the YouTube channel, of course, is now taking a huge amount of time too. I've dropped the store, the online store. I had an online store where I was selling blue scuzzies and, and, um, uh, and Zulu scuzzies. I'm not doing that. I've handed that over to someone else and they're going to be firing that, that website up. I think like within a week that they're going to be starting to sell Zulu Scuzzy stock. Um, and I will make plenty of it. I'll, I'll spread that information around once it's, once it's available. Um, and so I'm just having to pare things back a little bit to uh, get my life on track because, you know, I'm, I'm working seven days a week um, and working quite long days, seven days a week. And so, you know. It is a new lapel, Mike. Thank you very much. I just mentioned you a little bit earlier, Nick. Thank you very much. So it's, it really caught me out because when I first got it, I plugged it in and it didn't work. And I'm like, the doesn't work. But it turned out that I, it came with this. It needed this little adapter in here. So the, that's the, um, that's the normal plug there. And that goes into the adapter. And once it's in the adapter in there, that works. So it's a little bit clunky but it works and uh, you tell me how the sound is so uh you know i uh, it seems okay i'm watching my little levels here and it seems like i'm pumping out nice loud sound so oh yes shirt thank you uh all of the shirts that i wear all the wacky shirts that i wear come from a company called qwerty q w e r t double -E dot com Lots of fun stuff in there, lots of esoteric stuff, movie-related stuff. Um, I'm actually going to see if I can maybe set up some sort of affiliate program with them because I wear them in all my live streams, I wear them in all my videos, I'm always wearing QWER t-shirts, and I do, I do love this, it's, uh, you know, because I'm old, so I remember things like that. Um, okay. Uh... Yeah. Ah, there's the video, cool, excellent. Um, okay, so uh, we're starting to pull this apart. Now, one of the things about the Macintosh Classic, it is a computer that was made on a budget. I'm just going to go side view the, here. I'm not sure. That's a bit close, isn't it? Probably need to zoom out a smidge. I do have a remote for this, but it's buried under stuff, so I'm going to have to get up and do this manually. I've got a remote that allows me to zoom in and out from this camera. There we go. You can see the mess. Welcome to the mess. Yeah. What? I nearly fell over, sorry. There we go, a little bit higher. Okay, righty, so as I was just saying, the Macintosh Classic was a computer that was a budget computer. And one of the things that this doesn't have is a connector to remove this little uh, neck board. 
Um, so this neck board is hardwired onto this. So you need to undo this screw, this screw, this grounding wire. Don't forget to put it back when you're doing this, by the way. Then you're going to take the neck board off, leaving this incredibly exposed. I'm actually seriously thinking about 3D printing a protector that I can slide on these when I'm working on the board. So the, the, it'll slide onto there and it'll just protect this little glass nipple on the end here because it, all it takes is a decent down like that and you're gone, which I have done before. Um, okay, so, uh, oh, sticky, 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 sticky. Now my fingers are sticky. Okay, so yeah, this, this is hardwired onto the board and you can actually see, uh, let's just, uh, <laughs> Ah. Ah. I'm just going to undo these screws. I've got the wrong size screwdriver here and I am always giving other people grief about using the wrong size screwdriver so I had better use the right size screwdriver. Joe Williams, hello. Uh, and Eternal Freedom BTC, hello. Um, <laughs> sorry, this software that I use doesn't show um, emojis and things like that it describes them and so eternal freedom btc I, I really should go and have a look at what it, it says here face fuchsia poop shape there you go a messy desk bench is a sign of a genius or or or, or it just could be a lazy person <laughs> um i do actually i mean i do t clean this every now and again um and it's probably time all right, so that's the hard drive connector, which I didn't need to undo from there because I undid it from there. Uh, speakers built in on these and again, hardwired as well. So you can't actually remove them easily. Um, if you do need to take the, uh, if you do need to take the speaker off these, you have to actually drill out these rivets and remove it, which I've done many times because um, sometimes I need to wash these boards when they're really bad. And so I, eh. Yeah, I'll pop those there so I don't lose them. Um, yeah, so I sometimes uh, take the speaker off to give them a good wash. So th this is the thing that I find a little bit interesting. Most of the time on these classic analog boards, you have only one of these here, and then you have a jumper going across. Um, See, so what does it say here? It says 240 volt, no jumper JP1. So yeah, I see JP1 and there is no jumper there. But there is normally only one cap here. So that's interesting. Interesting like interesting. Uh, Chris Angelus, hello there. Looks like a beautiful day down there today. Yeah, it is. It's, look, it's, it's winter, so it's, it's fairly chilly. There's a gentle breeze at the moment. The sun is shining on my face, as you can see, which is a bit annoying. But that's just how it is this time of year, because the sun's very low in the sky. Because that's that. That is north. So, and so as the sun does its arc across the sky, it doesn't get particularly high at this time of year. And so that means that, that sun ends up shining right in here. I need to get some sort of curtains or something. Um, finally found a source for buying replacement ones of these little, little plug things. But having said that, um, I have been three, 3D printing my own and I like mine more than the real ones. So I'm probably just going to keep using mine. Um, I mean, unless people are like, oh, they must be the original plugs. Oh God, see, I drop them all the time. <laughs> As with any analog board, we obviously need to do recapping, but we also need to sometimes clean them up because sometimes when they get the goop on them, uh, they, uh, they corrode, they cause a lot of corrosion. See, look at this. See all this? This gunk? That's gunk. That's gunk. That's nasty gunk. We leave that long enough, that will, um, you know, that will cause some corrosion, and we've got to get rid of that gunk. Uh, it's going to stink too. Uh, and that's because of this little cluster of capacitors here. They fail. Now, uh, they fail, you know, catastrophically. Um, I have to... I have got a sinking suspicion I am not going to have all the caps I need for this because I know I ran out of some recently and I suspect they're these. Now, that may mean I don't get this finished, but I will be able to get it finished today because I can walk up to the local electronics retailer and buy any of these that are missing because most of these I think are fairly straightforward. Uh, does it have the same flyback as the Plus? 
Um, I recapped the classic animal board a while ago with those two caps and I noted it had an old style plus flyback, maybe a really early classic. It does, it absolutely does have um, the same flyback as, as, the, as, the, as the Mac Plus and the later um, sort of 128K and 512. The early 512 and, and 128 or whatever, they had a little tiny little flyback and then they put these bigger ones and the bigger ones are on the Mac Plus as well. And yes, you're, you are exactly right, it is that sort. Um, I'm just not happy about the fact that I'm going to have to replace two of these because they're expensive. Very expensive. Um, it's the connector as well, see? Look at that. That's the old connector. So this is the yoke connector here, and it's the old-fashioned one like the like on the Mac Plus. They later replaced these with... I've got another bloody analog board here. I can just show you. It's freaking dirty, though. As you can see, this connector changed. Let me just change the top view here. I think it'll probably be easier to see. So, all right, oh, get out of the way. Okay, so you can see here, it's very hard to see because of the sun shining on me, but you can see here this, this yoke connector, and you can see here this flyback transformer, and then we'll compare it to this one, and this is, so thank you very much. Who was that that said that? Uh, it was Luke F. Thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. That's excellent. Um, so that's the Mac Plus flyback transformer, and then it's the old form of yoke connector there as well. So yeah, this is obviously an early one. I should probably take photos of this because I haven't taken photos of this. I should take photos of the serial number and editing. I go a click and a click, and then I take a photo of the serial number, a click. Um, so the way these were made is they these were manufactured as a single board. So this here would have been there like that. So they were they were sort of produced as a single uh, PCB, and then they would snap this part off, and then wire together to make that. And that was obviously part of their cost cutting measures. And you know, good on them for that. But it is one of the reasons why um, our Mac. Uh, classics give me so much grief is because they were a budget machine. Uh, I can also say that they might have been using better caps on these because these aren't n anywhere near as bad as some of the ones I've seen. Um, all right, what's the rating of those big caps? Which ones? These ones? Okay, so these are 220 microfarad, 400 working volts. So that's, I think, is it both of them? Is it both of them? Let's have a look. Eh. Eh. So that's 220, 400. Yeah, 220, 400 times two. Um, where's my 400? I mean, these caps are expensive. I have to charge more for these ones, won't I? That's 50 volt. 35 volt. Uh, where's the 400 volt? I don't know, it's here somewhere. 100, 200. There we go. Uh, so I've got these. I do have replacements for them. So this is them. This is the 220, 400. So I do have I do have replacements for those. But I'm going to have to buy some more soon because they're not cheap. Um, when I am recapping a Macintosh Classic. Uh, I need to update my recapping guide on my on my website. When I'm re recapping a, a Macintosh Classic, I obviously do this little cluster here. I do sort of any of the larger caps. Sometimes I do every cap on the board, and I may end up doing so for this one. I think we're starting to get to that stage. There was a time when you could say, ah, oh, we'll just do these ones. The other ones will be fine, but they're less fine these days. Uh, and I usually then also replace QP1, which is the opto coupler or something like that. That one there I, get, I usually replace as well. I've sometimes had to replace this guy. Um, and of course I always check for crack solder joints. Really common to get crack solder joints, particularly on connectors like this. Well, I, this is probably cracked if we have a look at it. No, not really. It's okay. Anyhow, we have to start getting some caps off this because then this isn't going to recap itself. And we're not here to do something to spiders, just in case there's anyone any other Australians out there that know about our silly sayings? Angie, uh, dangy. Mm -hmm. 
the sun's really messing with my uh, sort of camera brightness. Oh, that stinks. Oh, if only you guys could get the smell coming from this cap. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, look at it. Oh, let's, I'm going to just shove this under the microscope for a sec. Why is my light off? Why is my microscope light off? I finally got around to doing some cable management. I've been talking about this on my live streams now for ages, ever since I got this new arm for the microscope. And uh, I've now got all the, the cables. I'll just do the side view here. Uh, if you can see, you can sort of see. I got all these cables now running up down the neck there, so they're out of the way, so it's a lot easier and less likely to break things. Uh, horse to see, hello there, horse. It's his stream time. Uh, it's drop bear day. Um, it's too bad they didn't use nice caps on the logic boards too. Yeah, I, um, look, I mean, that, it was a bad time for caps, let's just say that. <laughs> um, No, that is a real saying. It is a real saying. I can't say it because it has a swear word in it. We're not here to <coughs> spiders. Um, don't know where it came from. It just appeared out of the blue. Um, and, uh, and people just started saying it. And it's essentially a term that we use to describe, you know, we, we, we're not here to mess about. We're, we're here to, to, you know, we're here for business. Look at that. We've got some uh, charring around that, that as well, as well as the leakage. So that's nasty. Um, and so, for example, let's just say if I were going to a friend's house for a, a drink or something like that, going to watch a game or something like that, and they might say, uh, hey, would you like a drink? And I would say, I would reply with, well, I'm not here to <coughs> spiders, which sort of means, yes, I want a drink. That's the sort of, that's the sort of context where that saying would be used. But yeah, it is a real saying, and don't ask me why and how or, you know, or anything like that. I don't, because I don't know. Did it do? Um, I, I, you know what I haven't done? I haven't done one of these. Smash that like button. If, if you'd like, um, please smash that like button. Like that smash button as well, if, if you want. Okay, so top view. Right, so this cap here is definitely leaky, needs to be replaced. He is 1000 microfarad, 35 volts. Now, I am gonna tread very carefully with this board because it might actually be different to the other ones because we've already found that this has got two caps here. It's got a different flyback. It's got a different connector here. So there might be slightly different capacitors in this region as well. So I'm going to no, the word chew couldn't be used. You could maybe say, um, no, I won't. I, I'm not going to sully. I'm not going to sully this uh, live stream with, 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 with bad taste. So, no, that's the, that's stuff for, uh, go, I don't know. I don't know. I and mean, there could be youngsters that watch my live stream. You know, I don't know. Um, there's a little bit of busted plastic off the computer. Uh, I've got a Quadra 840 AV arriving this week. <laughs> um, I'm probably not going to live stream that recapping. I'm probably going to pre-record it. So uh, be on the lookout for that one. Um, I am going to actually do the whole process and then I'm going to have a bit of fun with the Quadra 840. Assuming I get it working. I mean, we can't just presume that I'm going to get it working. I mean, 840 AVs are a nightmare. There are two different types of board that you get for the Quadra 840 AV. There's a green one and a black one. And the green one, I think, is made in Ireland, and the black one is not made in Ireland. I don't remember where from. And the black one is typically a lot more difficult than the green one. So, uh, doing a bit of late-night programming. Good on you, Eric. Um, one or two caps different to your guide. Okay. So, well, the first thing I have to do is start with the guide, and then we'll see what the differences are. Wait, wait. Uh, uh, oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 Do I have a system here? Yeah, sort of. Wow, look, I've got a recapping guide for an SE30 analog board, but I don't think I've ever posted that on the website. Or maybe I have, I don't know. Mm. Oh, it was here all along. It was look at the first page. I just started looking the wrong direction. Not here to beat around the bush or kick a dead horse. Yes, beat around the bushes is certainly a saying that we use here. 
Um, all right, so now what I removed, what I removed is different. Let that be known. Let that be known. So I removed a 1000 microfarad 35 volts, and this is saying it's a 50 volt 470 microfarad. So we are already off to a really rocky start here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw on this and I'm going to go 1000. Whoops, one, I've forgotten how to write. Does anyone else have that problem? You type all the time and then you just go to write something and you go, oh, I can't remember how to write. 35 volt UF. Yes, yes, this, this is very true, because we are, we, us Aussies, we, we're all pretty gross, uh, and very rude, extremely rude, swearing a lot. Um, just, if you do come to this country, if you've never been here before and you are planning to come here, expect to hear a lot of swearing. People swear a lot out here. All right, I need my 35 volt caps. 25 volt, that's not 35 volt. Are they up there, perhaps? There's 63, ow, 250, oh, I must be down here. Okay, let's have a look, shall we? Struggling a little bit here with the space and things. I need to figure out what to do with all these caps, so find a better way. 16 volt. Where's the 35 volt? Oh. Up, 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 up. Thank you. Uh, 35 volt. 1000 microfarad, 35 volt. I do have some. I've got one that I actually, look at that, I've, I've already used it. And then I have um, taken it out. I mean, it's still brand new. Hmm, interesting. Curiosity, show. All right. Uh, what sort of footy is that? Uh, oh, you're from uh, Victoria, which means it's got to be AFL, doesn't it? It has to be. <coughs> mm -hmm. Minus. Okay. That's a plus, that's a minus. I'm enjoying the cricket at the moment. I would very much love to see Australia win the game that they're playing against England at the moment. We will find out tonight, assuming it doesn't get rained out. Uh, I need my, my fancy goggles. Another classic, another, yes, I know, it's all I seem to have at the moment, classics. Classic galores. Hello, Dana, how are you today? I have felt, yes, yes, yes. Not that rugby thing. <laughs> yes, of course, we're from Sydney. I'm from Sydney. I'm from um, New South Wales. And New South Wales are uh, much more into rugby league here. Um, whereas in Victoria and in uh, South Australia, they're all into uh, AFL, uh, Australian football, Australian rules football. And uh, yes, but whereas I have absolutely zero interest or knowledge or anything of AFL, I don't watch it, I don't get it, I have no interest in it whatsoever. Um, but it would be different if I was in Melbourne. I would, I would probably be very into it because everyone in Melbourne seems to be. Rugby union, don't mind a bit of rugby union, um, you know. Definitely don't mind a bit of rugby union. Do do do. I hate I hate scrums though. I, I scrums just infuriate me because all of the players now are so massive that when they get together to do a scrum, they just have they struggle to keep the thing together. Um, so this is a going to be a slightly slower recapping job than normal because it is different to um, my other, um, it's different to my guide. So I can't just whip them all off and then stick them on because they're different. They're different to my guide and I will forget what goes where and who, go, who does what and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Oh, this one's grubby as well. Mmm. That's a shocker. Okay, this is 2216. 
I've, I, I'm really worried about my 16s. My 16 supply is getting very thin. 2200. I have two different types of 2200. Uh, I, this is, one of them is empty, but I still have these ones. These are still fine. These are, the Nichicon, so they're a good quality brand. They are, let's just check. Oh, crap. No, I can't use these. Poos. These are only rated to 85 degrees C, and I'm replacing one that's rated to 105. So I ain't going to be doing that. I have a great big fat 2216, but he's not going to fit in there, I don't think. Oh, we might. We might be able to use him. Let's give it a whirl, shall we? Uh, 2216. I think he might actually fit in there, you know? Just. 2225. Yeah, look, I can possibly do it. Let me just see. Let's see what I've got in the way of my 25. There we go. I just may not have a 2200. Oh, I do have a 2200, but it's even fatter. So yeah, we won't be using that one. Okay, so I'm just cleaning the gunk from underneath the cap because obviously while the cap's not there, I'll give it a good clean. I mean, I'm, I'm half tempted to actually give this whole board a wash, but I like to avoid that unless it's absolutely necessary because it is a bit of a pain. Okay, so that's positive and that's negative. You need to accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. No, don't eliminate it completely. It's not the best fit, but it's kind of it's kind of there. Hmm. Does a quick little check. Uh, I may end up having to buy this cap. Um, I'll just see what. See, you're not going to look. Just, just bear with me. Justin killed two boards in his ultrasonic cleaner. How? Uh, do you find those solder suckers uh, lose their suction after a while, even after cleaning it out? Mine just doesn't really work. Uh, no, not at all. Are you, is it the same sort that you're using? This one? This one here? Uh, this is made by Gut. Same company that make this uh, solder wick that I use, and I bought this from JCar. So um, this one here never really had any issue with that losing its suction. Um, JCar, let's go twenty two hundred UF twenty five volt twenty two hundred sixteen. Was it sixteen? We're after, wasn't it? Yeah, twenty two hundred sixteen. Let's see if we can get some dimensions. See if it's a thinnish, thinnish one or it's a little fatty. Uh, description, features, specifications. Doesn't give me the diameter, which is a bit of a poo. All right, so, but I may end up having to go and do that. Good, it is good. Yeah, oh, exact same one from Jacob. No, I have never had a problem with the suction on this, ever. Uh, I mean, I guess you could look at replacing this little rubber O-ring here. You could look at that. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this thing has performed flawlessly for me and it's the, this is still, this is the only one I've ever owned. Um, so, all right. So, the question remains, am I going to use that cap or am I going to try and find a different one? I'll see what happens when I take these other two out. Uh, what was here was 2200, I want to write this on my little thing, 2216. Oh, that's the same. 2216 is the same. So, okay, and I wonder if these, so these should be 2210s if it's going to match my recapping guide. So let's just see. Let's just have a look, shall we? I didn't test this beforehand. Um, 
and with the amount of leakage I see on this one, I really would not recommend firing it up. I would say that recap, recap first, test after. So how did he, how did Justin destroy boards in his ultrasonic cleaner? Do tell, I'm curious. 2210. 2210, yes, so they do match the guide. They do match the guide and they are very leaky. Uh, did you think that stumping was not in the spirit of the game and just following the rules? No, it was following the rules. I've, I have absolutely no issue with the stumping whatsoever. Um, it was clever cricket. Um, that guy had been doing that constantly. He was doing it over and over again. He kept walking away from his crease before the ball was, you know, while, while the ball was still live. And the wicketkeeper was watching him do it over and over again. And he said, you know what, I'm going to take advantage of that. And I just think that's clever cricketing. And the people whinging about it, I mean, they're the ones that actually wrote the rules. So if they don't think it should be legal, then remove it from the rules. They've got the power to do that. Uh, if it is in the rules and it is legal, then I'm absolutely and totally fine with it. Um, Andrew Bernard, Bernard. Andrew Bernard, hello there. Love your streams and other vids. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. <clears throat> What's the temp of your iron when desoldering? Uh, the temp of my iron is always the same. I don't change the temperature of my iron at all. If I need super mega heat, I will generally put a bigger um, a bigger um, tip on it because they transfer heat better. But my soldering iron is always blazingly hot. And I don't necessarily recommend this for everyone else, but I have mine set on 440 degrees Celsius. Now, it doesn't quite get up to that temperature. I mean, that's because it's a little bit out. I'm probably soldering at about maybe 420, something like that. Um, and I just solder in a particular way where I like incredibly high heat but I don't necessarily recommend it for other people because it's just the way I like to solder you should see how dirty this is look at this I'm gonna just change over that scope and shows you look at that lick it lick it Never watched a cricket game. I'm not surprised. I mean, if you're, um, you know, I mean, sort of, the, the, a very large population part of the population does play cricket, but um, but you know, it's not something that uh, has spread to uh, all parts of the world. I mean, if you were, for example, in India or Pakistan or the West Indies or England. Uh, or Australia, or New Zealand, you know, you are going to see cricket getting played a lot. <laughs> scunge. It is scunge. I've got resin on my, uh, on my scalpel blade from when I was playing with resin earlier. I was making something for my car. <laughs> and it went really well too, by the way. Whee. Uh, I do leaded solder at 250 and go up to 350 for lead free and I thought I was overdoing with that level. Um, I get in and out really quickly. Um, I ordered an inspection microscope for and financial year treat as I'm making more and more tiny things this time. Yes, microscopes are very handy things. I mean, I reckon, I actually think every home should have one. And even just like for removing splinters or something like that, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, the, um, uh, I was going to say something. I was going to say something. Um, and it wasn't going to be particularly interesting, but I was going to say it anyway. Hello, Failcore. Uh, students, uh, Pop was a former pro Welsh rugby player. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, so um, I get in and out very quickly with the soldering. So if I'm soldering something, it's like I just touch the iron on there, melt, bang, I'm gone. And so, um, you know, it, it works for me. And it, it, so many people tell me, like people who solder a lot so many people tell me your iron is too hot and of course my response to that is well my iron might be too hot for you but it's perfect for me this is soldering is is an art form um and it doesn't all have to be done this the way that everyone else does it uh okay 
This is 2,210 volt. Let's see what we have here. I'm hoping I have some really skinny ones that might help that other one fit better. That's 16. That's 50. <sighs> oh. 250. So they're all they're all down here. All, the, all of my important ones are all down here. So there's 16. Ah. Ten volt. I get me out really quick. I, 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 there's never any shortage of stuff that I say being taken out of context by uh, 2210. What? Oh, 2200, here we are. These are fat too. Oh my God, did I squash this one? What the hell? Check this cap out. Uh, head out for a bit, good luck. Thank you, thank you very much, Luke F. Thank you for joining. I guess I must have rolled a chair over it or something, but this cap is, uh, let's just say past its prime. So, uh, uh, mm, w uh, e uh, mm -hmm. can I get these all in here? Plus, plus, down, plus, 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 minus, down, minus, plus, 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 minus. I'm really hopeful that I can just use this cap. Um, I just need to... Do a little bit of juggling. It's a good cap. I mean, it's a good quality cap. As long as I can get it in there, into the space, we'll be fine. Uh, everything will be fine. We are, I'm fine now. How are you? God, this smells. This is definitely one of the smelliest boards I've worked on in a while. Obsidian Xenon, hello there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I did send a message, Jay. Um, you know, if you're not going to check your messages, you cannot blame me if you miss out on the live stream. Uh, that's just how it works. 1016. Um, we have set up a communication channel for this purpose. 1016. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. <clears throat> mm. I'll give you, I'll give you some warning for that, Jay, so you can actually then record it. No, actually, it's gone away. Sorry. I caught up with some friends last night and uh, one of them had seen Dial of Destiny and loved it really enjoyed it said as uh, an indiana jones fan he said it far surpassed that terrible crystal skull one that they did and said it was an entertaining romp start to finish now i'm going to make my own mind up on that i i'm highly cynical um but i just thought that was interesting 1016 plus there minus there you know, I think I might be able to get this to work. I'm going to... Um, do do do. <laughs> he could have been sloshed out of his skull. He really could have. Um, I have said many times before, I am not a fan of the kind of rehashing of old ideas. I much prefer uh, to see a bit of originality. Um, I mean, you know. Not a big fan of what Disney is doing at the moment. Let's just say that. All right, so I'm gonna solder in this big fat one now and then just get all the other ones to crowd around the outside of it. Well, 
How about I change views to something where you can actually see what I'm doing? How about that? How about that? <clears throat> A personalized notification. Oh. No. I told you I was going to stream today, so. You should have just been sitting there waiting, waiting for that message to come through. Poised, even. <laughs> All of them. All of the above, Nick. I don't like... I don't like what they are doing. All of the above. You just, every now and again, like a good movie will come along and you just get reminded that they can still be made and that there are still some fresh ideas out there. I'm hungry, I haven't had breakfast. Just, just, just letting you know that. Um, I think my wife is bringing home some lunch for me. Um, I think she's gone to the markets and she is going to grab some food from one of the Filipino food stalls and I am rather looking forward to that now the way my tummy is super hungry <laughs> Bluey should never be censored. I remember there was an episode of um, Peppa Pig, which is an English show, and there was an episode of Peppa Pig where they were dealing with spiders, and in and in the um, the show, the the child, whoever it was, I guess is it Peppa? I don't know. I don't watch the show. Um, it's a bit out of my age bracket, but um, there was a spider and they were actually teaching the pig, you don't have to worry about spiders, they're not dangerous. And they had to not air that one out here because in this country they bloody are. <laughs> uh. One bubbled when I heated it. Ooh, look at the gunk. Look at the gunk. It's very satisfying, you know, when you, you are recapping one of these and you're removing all of this disgusting gunk. It is extremely satisfying. Uh, Retro Techie, hello there. Everything in Australia wants to kill you. Yeah. Even the ones that can't kill you still want to kill you. Oh, that was a noisy car. Oh, look at my little, I cut my head. I banged my head on my 3D printer yesterday. I was uh, fixing something and I was kneeling down next to it and then I dropped something and I went down to pick it up and then on my way up I managed to bang my head on the edge of my Ender 3 V2, which is a bit of a bugger. So fresh and so clean, clean. Okay, what's this one? This one is a 1000 microfarad, 10 volts.
1,000 microfarad, 10 volts. <laughs> yeah, I, I look. Hello there, Totus, 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 Toadie, Toadie. I'm. I'll, I'm not sure. Would you let me know if it needs to be pronounced any special way. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I mean, look, I, I guess it's probably part of being here. But I have a fairly, um, uh, fairly relaxed around spiders. Um, Huntsman can bite, but they just typically won't, unless you really piss them off. And their bite is painful. It's just not venomous. Or poisonous? Poisonous. Because it's, snakes have venom. I don't, think, I, I don't think they use the same terminology for spiders. I could be wrong though. I regularly am. Doo -doo -doo. We have anti-venom for all our snakes and spiders that may bite you. There is no anti-venom if a bear bites you. <laughs> oh dear. Yes, I mean, even though we have the funnel web, which is the deadliest spider in the world, it is my understanding, um, no one has died, no one's died from a funnel web bite since I think the 80s. Uh, I remember the last person that did it was a young boy. He'd been bitten by a funnel web and they hadn't made the anti-venom at that stage. And uh, yeah, it was 1980 something, I remember being on the news and seeing him sort of, you know, sort of in a hospital bed and then he ended up dying from it. That was the last death. They produced the anti-venom very soon after that. And now all hospitals and that carry it. So, I mean, if you get bitten by a funnel web, you can basically just rock up to any hospital and get the anti-venom. Oh, and what about the octopuses? The blue ring octopus or the stonefish? You know, we've got lots of nasties in the water as well. <laughs> There's the bald head. Bald head on camera. Just wait for the flying spiders. <laughs> I mean, we've got jumping spiders. Jumping spiders are very common in, um, uh, you know, sort of in all, all over the world. But their jumping spiders are so small. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I, I, I think a moose would scare me. All right, what do we got here? This one is a 47025, 47025. So apart from this one, this 1000 microfarad 35 at the top, all the rest of these have been true to my recapping guide. Um, so 47025. And I think there's two of them. Yeah, there are two of them. No anti-venom for a great white, no. That's right. You won't catch me getting bitten by a great white because I don't go in the bloody ocean. Yeah. Mooses. Is it the plural for moose or is it meese? I want it to be meese. <coughs> Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That is that. There we 
we go. Okay. I'm still working on a couple of review videos. I'm hoping I might actually get one finished today. The other one I started working on the other day and I accidentally broke the thing I was reviewing. Uh, and I think they're going to end up having to send me another one. And I feel very bad about it. It wasn't on purpose. Um, it was my fault. Um, so I'm not going to assign any blame to the manufacturer of the product or anything like that because it was definitely my fault. Um, but anyhow, we're working. I've been working through with them to see if I can get it to work, and if I can't get it to work, they're going to just send me another one, and I can finish it. But I was really frustrated because I was filming away, brought all the lights out, everything is all set up and everything, and then it's like, ah, oh, crap, crap. Right, so that's that little cluster of crap there. Um, and they're gonna replace these two big fat, fat, fat ears. And I'll replace a few as scattering over here as well. Um, we'll just have a look at them and see how they are. So some of these ones, these particularly these little tiny ones, they just never seem to have an issue. Um, they just seem to go on and on. Andrew Bernard, thank you for your guides. I read Captain LC475 and it's PSU with uh, their help. Excellent, good to hear. Um, yeah, good to get these things uh, working and fixed and everything. I've got a whole bunch of projects that I need to, to, to get working on once I get some of these videos out of the way. Uh, and of course, these projects are gonna have videos made of them. But I'm planning to make a uh an lc3 kind of custom thing if i can if i can get it to work i want to turn an lc3 into a portable um you know with a little liquid crystal screen and stuff like that i i i, I you know i'll sort of 3d design and 3d print the case for it and everything like that i don't know if it's going to happen but it'd be fun um I wouldn't worry, Jay. We're a long way away, and there's a lot of a, a lot of water between the, the two countries, so I don't think the spiders are going to make their way over there. Unless I send you one. <sighs> Look out in the package. All right, fat, fat, fat is minus down, minus to the right. Off she comes. <coughs> PowerBook LC3. Yeah, this is sort of what I want to do. Now, the power supply is going to be the trickiest part. I've got to try and figure out how I'm going to do that because I need, I need to create a power supply. I'll probably have to make a new power supply that I can run off like um, little lithium batteries that will be um, um, a 12 volt output, 5 volt output, and minus 12 volt output. If it was just doing 12 and 5, it would be so easy. But I've got this minus 12 as well. Breakers book. Yeah, cool. So it, it basically comes about because I have a surplus uh, uh, LC3 board. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to just muck around with that? Um, I'm going to test these caps. Now, have we mentioned today the importance of a good multimeter if you're doing any work like this? And I gotta tell you, my Kaiwitz KM601 is fantastic. There are so many things I love about this. I mean, I love the great big color screen. I like the fact that the there's a light as well as a beep when you're doing your continuity tests. Uh, I like that these little LEDs flash to tell you which, which plugs you're supposed to stick into which hole at the bottom, depending on what you're testing. 
Um, I like the fact that it takes AAA batteries rather than 9 volt batteries. That's a really good thing. But the thing I love about it the most is the price. You will find a link in the description if you want to buy one. Um, Kaiweets KM601. Now, when testing capacitors, in particular with this one, it does take a little while for it to come up. 210? Oh, that's all right, it's a 220, yep. So it's, it's reasonably close. These caps will probably be okay, but I'm still gonna replace them. 211. <laughs> probably use an LM2596 as an inverter. See, this is where you actually need people who know what they're talking about to do these sorts of things, because I don't. Um, I'm gonna probably just bodge it together out of AliExpress parts, so, you know. That's my thing. All right, get these two new caps that look very, very similar to the old ones, let's face it. I mean, Nichicon, Nichicon. Yeah, you can hardly tell them apart. Hardly. All right, so plus on that side. And plus. Um, plus up that way. Yeah. Wouldn't want to get these ones around the wrong way. End up in a world of hurt. Yeah, I, I mean, I was thinking of starting, well, so it's very easy to get hold of a 12 and a 5 volt power supply um, that I could rig up to a battery without too much difficulty. I did find like a little, like a little step downy type thing. So if you put in 16 volts to this thing, you could get it to output whatever you wanted, anywhere between like 3 and 12 volts or something. And I was just sort of thinking, um, if I find myself like a 16 volt battery operated power supply, or something like that, I can then sort of step down to whatever I need. But we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm gonna have to, you know, it's, I've got to spend a bit of thought and time and stuff. And then I've got to figure out the design of the thing. I mean, it's not going to be pretty. I mean, it's, I, I, does it even need to be? you know, portable. I mean, I could make it portable, but not battery operated, you know, so you still plug it in, but it's nice and easy to move around, something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I heard that you can approximately measure inductance with a capacitor tester and a lookup table. You may well be right. Inductance is one of the things that I've never really gone into for testing so obviously we're talking about inductors here um and you know if you just try and test them with the multimeter they just it's like there's continuity there and um uh, i think you can do it with i think you could do it with one of these fuse uh, uh, uh. just grabbing my thing here excuse me while i grab my thing i think you can do it with one of these this is an LCR meter, and I'm pretty sure LCR meters can be used for testing inductance. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure. I'm not certain, because I've never actually gone to do it. And the main reason is that inductors very rarely fail. Um, I've never, I have never, the only time I've ever had an issue with an inductor was when it actually, uh, it had actually lost a connection. Um, so, yeah, oh, most of the time, certainly with the computers I'm working on, it's something else. Trying to power convert as you find at a Toshi station. <laughs> you can waste time with your friends. There are chores to do. Uh, okay. Um, just going to do a few things here because that's, you know, that's how I roll. Um, TDA4605. That's, no, nope, I don't want that. What's that? I've got to find 
thing. Looks like I've got a container up there full of not working capacitors. Why do you reckon I'd do that? Who knows? Um, let's go into the Tashi station to pick up some power converters. So I'm I'm trying to find a container with miscellaneous stuff in it. I have a few misc containers. Ah, here it is. Yeah, found it. Yeah, everyone can be fine. Yeah, everyone fine. It's all good. Everything's fine. It's fine now. How are you? Um, okay, so that's the little chip that we're going to replace. Little QP1. Ah, that's it there. And he is going to replace that right there so because it is a point of common failure so when i recap these i replace that as standard now giving them the full service i'm thinking with these i should probably do this with wick rather than the solder sucker sucker so yeah. i bought some more wick the other day Now, as it turned out, Luke Skywalker did get to go and have a bit of fun because someone barbecued his aunt and uncle. Uncle Owen and Baru. Right, there's the old one, and I've lost the new one. Have I knocked it off the table? Probably. Shazbat. <laughs> it's a barbecue without barbecue sauce. Oh yes, you can definitely have a barbecue without barbecue sauce for sure. I wouldn't though, because I freaking love barbecue sauce. Is that the new one or the old one? That's the old one. So I'm just going to grab another one because I've lost the, that one. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's here somewhere, but I can't be bothered looking for it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there we go. We can do this. We can do this. I don't want to have to bend the pins. Yay. I did it. Okay, now I can solder this on good and proper. I often get people asking me, uh, when they watch my beginner's guide to soldering videos, you know why why flux? Why are you using flux? There's flux in the uh, there's flux in the in the solder. So why do you have extra flux? And that flux in the solder works perfectly for through hole, but not good for surface mount. Ah, dokie.
<laughs> Just doing a bit of a clean up here. Get rid of this gunk. This is, you know, in remarkably good condition. If you can see some of the classics that I have had to clean up and get, uh, get working again, this one is in stellar condition. Maybe it's because one of the it's one of the earlier ones. Maybe they got crappier as they got older. Who knows? <clears throat> yes, yes, I would agree with that about the uh, solder and you know the flux and drag soldering. If you are wanting to do drag soldering, then yes, I would say flux is a must. A lot of people disagree. Well, not a lot. Some people disagree with me, um, but as I've said before, I don't really sort of care too much about someone who says oh I do it this way um, you know you do it the way that suits you um, and that's exactly what happened to me I mean when I very first started doing this stuff seriously I mean I've been soldering since I was a little kid but when I started really seriously getting into soldering you know I was doing it uh, trying it lots of different ways and then I just decided on the way I like Come on, I want a knob on the top. <laughs> I'm just um, resoldering the yoke connector because it's, it's common place for there to be cracks. And although I don't see any cracks, yeah, you know, I just always figure better to be safe than sorry, don't you reckon? Oops, got something stuck in here. Yeah. Okay. I might have to clean this out. I got something stuck in here by the sound of it. I've got something sitting on my bin at the moment. It's making it very hard for me to actually put things in it. That's what we call a trash can. We call it a bin. Where's your bin? Pine sap is flux. Um, yes, I th think it is. I've got, ah, ouch, 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 ouch. I've got some here, actually. I've got a great big tub of Rosen flux. I used it as part of one of my instructional videos. Uh, it's the same stuff that they also use for um, uh, getting the vibration on, um, on violin strings. Dr. Rosen Rosen. <coughs> and it's, this is, this is, this is sealed up for good. Antec Tacky Flux is way nicer. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I mean, ow, <laughs> I just cut myself because I'm an idiot. Um, I um, am definitely a, um, a tacky flux person. I like tacky flux. And of course, I'm also very, very thingy about how they smell. Uh, we may never get this open, so I'm just, this demonstration may go nowhere. Um, they are, uh, uh, I'm very, I'm not opening it. Okay, so this is a rosin flux, a tub of rosin flux. So inside there is some rosin flux, but we're never going to see it. Um, you can watch one of my videos <laughs> if you want to see it, because I have it up for that. I don't use it. It works. It works, but I don't particularly like it. Uh, and you do have to clean it off and all that sort of stuff. So I just like the fluxes that don't stink, and they work. Um, and I've got a few favorites that I use. Um, yeah, And I also like the stuff that I don't have to pay for, so I'm using those as well. Mm -hmm. liquid flux no, liquid flux made my fingertips feel cold too so that means it probably has a very um, uh, low evaporation temperature would be my guess um, right now where were we so we've replaced QP1 we have replaced cap 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 
what's the best glue or method to glue together this old plastic? I have an Apple color monitor that just arrived and didn't survive shipping too well. Oh, look, that's a good question. Um, I have used super glue and bicarb of soda for some of those. Um, you know, uh, if you need to build up a buttress or something like that. I've heard some people end up end up using, um, oh, what's that stuff, that, like paint thinner type stuff? What is it now? Um, oh, man, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's, I've just drawn a blank. Um, that, that actually melts the plastic, and so you can stick it together by it actually melting the plastic a little bit. Sticking plastic together is difficult, in particular if you want it to have some some strength about it. Um, you know, because oftentimes it's just two little thin pieces of plastic like that and you just can't get enough surface area. Acetone, that's the word, thank you. Acetone is the stuff. That is what I was thinking of and I thank you uh, to both uh, Horst and Gutbomb for uh, helping me with my, um, my brain, which is, well, it's working against me these days. Um, right, so I'm going to just uh, replace a couple more of these caps. Uh, I'm going to replace this one and this one. So that is a 1016 and that one is a... Out of the way. 470.25. 1016, 470.25. 470.25. Blip, blip. And what was it, 1016? That's what I said, wasn't it? That's what I said, that's what I said. Uh, 16. I would like to be able to test this. 16. Getting low on those. I am gonna have to buy a ton of caps soon, and it's gonna cost me a bomb. It's gonna suck, man. Don't like it. Oh, my wife is home. Oh no, blood. Um, it was this one. I wonder if she got my message. I sent her a message before. 47025. And this one. I need to go to get some more 3D printer filament for my 3D printer. I'm running a little bit low. Well, this is glued on, I think. Eh. Yep, I've got some snot holding this one in place. Just bear with me a brief moment. How hot is it down there? Not. It's winter. It's hot. It's not hot at all. It is currently 18 degrees Celsius. The days are starting to get a little bit longer. I mean, only a little bit longer because we've been through the shortest day of the year. For me, the breakthrough moment is when sunset is after 5 p.m. Because when sunset's before 5 p.m., the days just feel so short. So when you actually start seeing the days get a little bit longer, like for instance, the day is... Um, uh, the sunset is at 5.02 p.m. today, and it's like, yeah, we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. 1,016. And... There we go. Days are getting short here, yes. What happens down here? We we'll get the opposite happening up there. Yeah, 
it has been quite a cold winter and dry as well and all of the signs are basically pointing towards us having a very hot dry summer and that is almost definitely going to translate into bushfires which I'm not looking forward to. Thirty thirty one C. That's hot. Melbourne sunset at five fifteen, so thirteen minutes difference. Meh. Hmm. Interesting. Of course, this is uh, quite a bit further down. It's a big old country, Oz. If you're not aware of it, it's uh, it's big. Um. Most of us are huddled on the uh, coast because it's a great big frickin' desert. <clears throat> okay, I've done those two. I would like to do um, I want to do I want to do this 220 this one here 220 microfarad 25 volt and it's different. The, that's 220.50 on that one. This is 220.25. What did that? What did they know? What did they find out? Why did they change it? Should I put the 50 on there instead of the 25? You tell me. Should I replace the 25 with a 50? Given that they started using a 50 in the later revisions of the board. Am I just getting too clever for myself? Yep, okay, yep. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace. Oh, this is leaky as, brah. Far out. Man, look at it. Oh, let's get this under the scope. I'll show you. How about that? How's that for some gunge? It's very moist. See how moist it is? Is Dana still around? He loves that word. Isn't this a moist capacitor, Dana? Very moist. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, 50, I said, wasn't it? 50. Just have to find my 50 container. There's 35. Fifty. <laughs> Two twenty fifty. Hello, Tevruden. I don't know if I've said hello to you today. This is me saying hello to you right this moment. Hello. Last night we went out to uh, a restaurant and the, so they have a restaurant upstairs and they have like a nightclub sort of thing downstairs and they kept on trying to get us to go downstairs obviously more expensive and whatnot and they just kept on uh, going at us and going at us you know come downstairs and then we were like um we want a, another bottle of wine please and they said oh no we're closing the bar up here if you want a drink you have to go downstairs so we left do not like having the hard sell put on me. Look, 
mortally, mortally wounded. Mortally wounded. My hands are actually in a, a terrible state at the moment. My arms here. This is because of my cat. We've got. We recently um, rescued some kittens, and um, I often end up when I'm sitting there watching TV. One of the kittens comes and curls up next to me, and then if he starts getting a little bit sort of carried away and having a bit of a game, he then starts tearing my arm apart. <laughs> Uh, dear, very cute little animal. Right. Now, then, you see, I'm sort of feeling like we're, we're ready to try this out. Um, there may be a couple more cats. See, I, I, I'm tempted to replace that one, that one, and that one, so that all we're left with is just the little teeny, tiddy, tiddly ones. And then we'll just see how this goes. So I mean, I think I'll do. I'll replace these three because, you know, because 4.7, 25 volt, 25 volt. Maybe I won't. I've got a 40. What? Is that? Does that not sound right to you? That was way too big to be that size. Must, maybe it's 2 250 volt. No? Yeah, 4.7 to 50 volt. <coughs> Excuse my cough. Oh, ow! Excuse me. Ah, 4.7 to 50. I don't have a lot of 250s. Only two. I've got a. 10 microfarad and a 4.7. Higher rated capacitors, wouldn't it be good insurance to stock higher rated caps as a rule? Um, so one of the things that actually can happen when you, oh God, it's this sun, wow. One of the things that can end up happening when you uh, put in higher rated capacitors, it can change the resistance. And so that could then have an impact on um, the running of the circuit, it might, end up so it, it you know it might just be like oh yeah put bigger ones in put bigger ones in but there are a couple of things first of all um it just may not be necessary you might be in a situation where you've got a 16 volt capacitor that's only got 10 volts running through it so they've already put in something of a higher spec so there's really no need to go even higher still uh, you see you you probably find that all these ones that are 16 it's probably a 12 volt circuit so they're already you know, higher, they're already uh, um, sort of rated higher as it is. Uh, and yes, you could just go in and say, oh, I'll stick 25s in instead of 16s or something like that. Um, but uh, as I say, one, it's it's probably not necessary. And another is that it, it, it can actually change the ESR or equivalent series resistance if you go too far out of spec. Apparently, apparently, I mean, but you know, I'm just, I'm just sprouting this stuff. I've got no idea. <coughs> <laughs> I really want to test this soon so I can go and eat my lunch that my wife has brought me. So it is my intention to, in the not too distant future to fire this up and see if it works. 4.7250. So if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, oh, is he ever going to fire this thing up? Yes, he is. Soon. And then I'll go get some yummies. And then I'm going to go and film some more of one of my review videos. I've got so many videos to do at the moment. My production schedule is long. Or well, my production list is long. Um, got some great stuff coming too, by the way. I think a lot of people will be interested in some of the things that I've got coming up. So, um, yeah, do hope everyone enjoys them. These speakers fail, by the way. I'm just letting you know. Um, I remember once uh, there was a person that had a... Uh, one of these computers and they was had no sound and I just 
gave them steps for testing to see if the speaker works. If you have never done it, it's pretty easy to do. Basically get yourself a multimeter, like a Kaiwitz KM601 digital multimeter. True RMS. Um, you get put it onto resistance like this, and then you get your probes, and you put them across the two thingies. The two pins of the speaker, like this. And you measure the resistance. This, this is reading, you can't see it because of the sun, but it's reading 61, around about 61 and a half ohms. Now, if we look on the back of this, this is a 63 ohm impedance um, speaker. And that's what you should be getting around about that when you test the resistance across it. If you get zero, if you get open, then you know that speaker's shot. And that has happened quite a lot on these. And I remember there was someone on Facebook was sort of saying, I'm not getting any sound. And so I gave them the instructions of how to test it. And this person's like, oh, those speakers never fail. And I'm like, you know, um, you, 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 you shouldn't really be sort of speaking as an authority on something if you really don't know, because those speakers fail a lot. Thank you, Enzo. Dynamac. What's a Dynamac? Please, please let me know what a Dynamac is, because I'm not sure. And sometimes they might be larger physically as well. That's another good point, Jack 68K. You might actually end up with um, a capacitor that doesn't fit into the space. Like my little crammed ones that I've got down in here. It's, it's fine, it is fine, but it's not as pretty as I would normally like. Um, I said I was going to replace these two as well, and then I'm going to call it a day. Well, we'll call it a test anyway. So this one is a 6.3, what? 6.3 volt 1000, and this one is hard to read. 2016, 2016. So let's just check that, see if that matches. And it doesn't, it does not. So that's really interesting. So this capacity here, um, this was a 470 10 volt on the other board. On this one, it is a 6.3 1000. Now, I do have some 6.3s, but I don't know if I have that one. I got a 100. So, I won't be replacing that one because I don't freaking have one. So, that one can stay. That one stays. This one is a... 2.2016, the looks of it. I need to get my other 16 container. I have two 16 containers because I have so many 16s. Oh, and it's all the way down the bottom. Poo. Okay, 2.2016, that's what I said, wasn't it? It was, it was. I know, I was right there. A Max laptop made by a third party company back in the day. They used an actual Macintosh motherboard. Oh, yeah, okay, I do know those. So we need our uh, Mr. Steve from Mac84. He actually did a video on that, um, pretty sure. So he was working on a second part to the video, but he's basically talking about uh, Macintosh clones. And he talks about how some of those early ones were actually using genuine Apple parts. Um, there was another one that I'd heard of, but I can't remember what it's called. Can't for the life of me. Those sorts of things are just, they're so kind of rare and expensive that uh, I'm, I'm never gonna own one. Oh, actually, I probably should never say never. I didn't think I'd ever own a Quadrate 40 AV either, but look at me, I've got one coming this week. 2016. Right, so this is the last one I'm going to change. As I say, I can't replace that other one because I don't actually have that cap. Um, and the reason I don't have it is because I suspect I may, may not have ever 
recapped one of these different uh, classic boards. I mean, I might have. I can't. I'm sure. Actually, I think I might even have one. But, you know, maybe I just didn't replace that cap. It's always possible. Okay, so what we're hoping now is that this will just fire up and work. But there's only one way to find that out. We've got to plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. I've got a uh, an LC575 analog board. Uh, if there's anyone out there who's good on sort of um, CRTs, because I'm not, I'm crap at CRTs. But anyhow, this analog board, it's uh, it's producing right power output, the sounds working. So when I when I put it in there and I switch it on, the computer chimes and it'll boot. But I'm just the image is just like spriggly lines, and it's not good. And I need to try and figure out what's wrong with it. I have recapped the obvious, the most commonly bad ones on those boards, but it's still the same, made no difference at all. So I'm gonna have to do actual diagnosis on that now. And I hate that sort of stuff. I hate working with those high voltages. I don't like it. Right. Now we're gonna see how, if we can get this set up with the very limited amount of space that I have here. Oh, it's nice and light without the analog board. It's not a 120 volt board, it is a 240 volt board. Hello Thomas, how are you? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the, uh, this is the 200, we've got a little tick here, you can see, tick. 240 volt, no jumper J1. And the jumper they're referring to is just in there. And there's no jumper there. Right, so when you put these in, you've got to get the speaker connected. There we go. And then we'll get the hard drive connected. Okay. Right. Yeah. There we go. And we will get the screws, two screws, and, and the screwdriver that I just dropped, I need again. I put it away prematurely. We don't need to screw both these in just for testing, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> did I just, yes, you probably did just hear a chicken. Uh, they're having a good old whinge there at the moment. It's a good question. I don't know what's for dinner. I, uh, I shall consult with my wife to see what she wants me to make. I do the cooking in this household, mainly because I enjoy it. Um, and it's Sunday here and we typically like to have something nice on a Sunday night but because we ate out both Friday night and Saturday night we definitely want to have a nice at home meal Friday night catching up with Mama Mama and, and Saturday night catching up with old school friends Right. Okay, so yoke connector connected. Uh, that's the uh, neck board connected. Uh, grounding wire connected. Flyback transformer connected. Hard drive is connected. Now all we need is a logic board. That shouldn't be too hard to find. If there is one workshop that has lots of Mac Classic boards, it's this one. I just have to find one. Shield your face when you plug it in. No! Chicken cam, yes. Well, shall we just have a quick look at the chickens now? We'll just go now to chickens. There we go. They're, I know that they look like pigeons, but there are chickens there. So 
you can see on the there's the, on the left there is the pigeon and another pigeon, another pigeon. But on the right, you can see the chickens. There is uh, the uh, brown Sussex there. We've got two of the black, well, three of the black ones there. So I don't know where the little white one is. She's the one that make, was, I think, making that noise. She whinges a lot. So, but there you go. There are the chickens, or chooks, as we would call them in this part of the world. Okay. What is the URL of the oh, well, the chook cam? I don't actually have that up and running at the moment. I should get it back up and running because it's so much more stable now. I had all sorts of problems with it before. Where it would just you would just constantly go offline. But it's it's really stable now, so I could probably do one. The I think the main issue I have at the moment is the audio. I think the microphone is rooted from being down there uh, for uh, uh, down in the outside. I probably need to 3D print some sort of enclosure, weather enclosure for it. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's see if we can find a logic board for this. Um, uh, That's no, 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 I mean, it will work. Oh, this looks like a classic. Yeah, this looks like a classic. And it even says Brancus on it. Brancus tells me it's mine. So I don't get it mixed up with the customer boards. So let's plug this in. Oh man, that plug, it's got some corrosion in there. I have to give that a bit of a clean. Now I'm running this just with the standard one megabyte. So it will not necessarily run, um, you know, uh, it, 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 I think you could, you could probably run system seven. But we won't be able to run 7.1 with only one megabyte of RAM, but we would at least be able to see it fire up and then see not enough RAM. I've got one of the little boards here, but uh, you know the little uh, expansion boards that gives us an extra one, or you can stick some SIMs in it and take it all the way up to four megabytes. That is the maximum amount of RAM you can stick in a Macintosh Classic. And you can't change that, sorry. No magic in the world to change it from being four megabytes maximum. I got that, I got that information from Kai Robinson, who is the authority, the authority. Yeah, here's a little board. Uh, sim on, sim off. Okay, so this one I can give it an extra one megabytes. One megabyte, take it from one to two. I had one of these that was stuffed. I hope this isn't the stuffed one. Yeah. And of course you can boot these from ROM, which is one of the great things about these. Right, I am going to plug in this power. Um, I keep 240 volts in this thing. So I'm just going to plug it in. Now, just keep in mind, of course, that I have been talking the whole time of doing this and I may have put a cap on the wrong way, who knows? So I'm just going to be very careful as I switch it on. Three, two, one. We didn't get any audio. We got a nice sort of healthy poppy sound though. I'm going to um, take that expansion off because I, I was using this the other day and I was having all sorts of problems with the memory expansions. Ow, ow. So I'm gonna assume that there may be something wrong with that one. Yeah, there is something wrong with that memory expansion. That's fine. 
Oh, that was a lovely chime. It was good. Oh, geez, we've got some geometry issues, don't we? <laughs> Let that be known. Um, I need my tools. Where are my tools? I've got special tools. They're special tools. And I've got no idea where they are. They're around here. So I, I usually keep them in this vicinity. But I've probably used them. And so they are therefore not there. Um, so they're adjustment tools. Uh, we can test the voltage. We can do that because I've got one of these awesome things here. KMAG, thank you. Feel free to put a link in the description if you're still here. Um, this is just like one of the most awesome things. I am going to do a video on it. Mind you, I got pipped at the post. It looks like um, James Wages has, has done a video on that. Right, so we're getting 4.72 and 11.3 volts. So I'm going to make a slight adjustment to the voltage using my special voltage adjustment tool. Super long, super long, so that I can get it through here without um, putting my hands in high voltage danger. Danger, danger, high voltage. It's a really dumb position of this thing too, by the way. Hey. I need my different glasses. These ones aren't helping me. Don't do this at home, by the way. I'm really struggling to see this because of my stupid old eyes. Oh, for far out. There we go. Got it in there. Just got it to 5.01 and 12.0. 5.0 and 12.0. Oh, look, it's perfect. <sighs> Feeling good about that. So now we've got the voltage right, and now we need to mess around with some of this geometry. Now I have some special plastic tools for adjusting the geometry, um, but I can't find them. So I have to do it with metal tools, and that's not what you're meant to do. Um, it's, that's, that's what they say. I'm gonna just shove something in there and see if I can get it to work. There we go. Yeah. It's, not, it's not doing nothing. Why isn't it doing nothing? Oh, okay, it is. Yeah, that's the width. So let's wind out that width a little bit. And then the height is one of these two, but don't ask me which one. It's this one or this one. We know that much. Yeah, that's the height. There we go. It needs to not be too big because it's not meant to be too big. And we're a little bit off center here, so I'm going to center that. And to do that, I will take my watch off and my jewelry because I am about to do. Uh, sort of hands-on sort of thing. So I've got to adjust these little tabs here. And one of the tabs moves it diagonally up and the other one moves it diagonally down. So with a little bit of finagling, we should be able to get it where we want it. Remember not to do this at home, folks. It's stupid. That will do us. I know it probably looks off center to you, but it looks pretty good to me. Oh, maybe not. Here we go. That'll do. Okay, so we've got a nice steady picture here. It's nice and clear. Um, I'm just gonna check the focus. I can't remember which one is the focus, but it's, it's either this one or this one. Oh, that's that one. Yep, that's perfect.
perfectly in focus now. Um, yeah, so this is good. I think the person whose computer this is will be happy. Um, I will probably leave this on for a little while. Um, I will probably uh, come back and switch it off and on again. The, the whole thing with these, when there are problems with them, you can have times when you switch them on and they don't come on straight away and then they come on afterwards. But we're not getting that with this. This one just fired up straight away, which is good. So feeling pretty good about it. So yeah, there's one more Mac uh, Classic that can find its way back to its owner. Um, feeling good, feeling good. Thank you for putting that link in there, um, KMAC. That's a, uh, it is a really, really good thing. And I will do a video on it, I promise. Uh, it is on my list. Um, did the original Apple basically use a shift register to store memory? I have no idea. Um, that will have to come from someone that knows more about those sorts of things. Uh, we will just plug in a keyboard and quickly boot this from ROM because that's the party trick of the Macintosh Classic, and it just wouldn't be, it just wouldn't be fair to not, not give it an opportunity to show its party trick. I've got a chicken coming to visit me. And what is it? It's uh, XO or something? Option, option Command XO? Is that right? Yeah. Hang on. Can anyone remember? X is it XO? That is so weird. What the hell is going on here? I switched it off and when I switch it back on, it just goes straight to this. Maybe there's something wrong with this keyboard. Let me just try it without the keyboard plugged in. seen anything like it? Have you ever seen it's like? This has got to be logic board based, it's not the analog board. Um, something going on here, something weird, it's my, it's my logic board so I'm not too fussed, maybe it needs cleaning, but it's just doing weird at the moment. It's kind of frozen. There we go, I just rebooted it. XO. Oh, I didn't got the... Bleh, 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 bleh. Opportunity to watch me lose my mind. This is so weird. Option Command XO. I think that's it. Command Option XO, yep. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath for this because I really do think this logic board's having some issues. But oh, look, look, it booted. Thankfully, this is my logic board and not the client's, the customer's logic board. Mine can be as stuffed as it wants. Uh, and there we go, in the RAM disk. Woo! Boot into ROM. Yeah, your ROM disk. And I think it's 607 or 605 or something like that. I can't remember. Let's have a look about the finder. 6, 603. I was way too far ahead. There we go, one megabyte of RAM. So there it is. Uh, you may start fixing stuff. I've already fixed it, sir. So this is the analog board, he's been re, uh, recapped, it's fired up, it's working. My logic board's a bit weird, but that's my logic board, it's allowed to be weird. I found the remote that I was looking for before. So now if the batteries still work, I think I can actually zoom. Oh, no, the batteries don't still work, so I need to put new batteries in it. Zoom, because I can zoom this camera with this. Oh, never mind. Not to worry. Okay, I can put my watch back on now. I'm not uh, sticking my hand inside it. So, there we go. All right, well, it's time for me to start wrapping things up now because I do want to eat some lunch because I am a hungry person. <coughs> um, so, uh, I'm just going to do my, my normal... Uh, is it? No, that's the other one. I'm going to do my normal thing here where I just sort of go and wrap up. So, we... Uh, this one, this live stream was... As advertised, uh, I've recapped the analog board of a Macintosh Classic uh, and it's working well. We're getting nice stable voltage from it, we're getting a nice sort of stable image from it. Um, got it all fixed up the geometry, got the focus all working and it all looks great. Is it just me or does this camera look like it's on a tilt? 
Oh, yeah, the monitor's all wobbly. I'll fix that. Um, so, uh, big thank you to everyone for joining me. Thank you for, uh, you know, sort of keeping the chat lively and keeping me entertained while I did this work, because it's one of my least favourite things to do, is the analogue board of a, a classic, and it's now done. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, thank you all for joining me. Um, I hope to see you again. I've got lots of videos in the pipeline at the moment, um, so I hope you'll... Uh, uh, look forward to those, and uh, and I will probably try and live stream again next weekend as well. So have a good one. Thanks again, and I will hopefully see you with the next one. So bye bye. Yeah.